Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at some ways to comp other people's solos in a samba style. In other words, how to help someone develop their solo by matching their intensity as their solo evolves. This video assumes that you're already conversant on the various samba rhythms presented in my book, Essential Latin Styles for the Drum Set. In samba, the form is usually more conventional than mambo. Usually it's some kind of song form, uh, simple as A-A-B-A -A -A, or something that's way more complicated than that, lengthy but not many, many sections of the tune like in a mambo. Um, in a mambo we'll usually have three or more sections in addition to maybe a song form, a, a verse, verse, chorus, verse, or A-A-B-A. Uh, for the first part of the piece, and uh, we described that while exploring the mambo. In samba, things are a bit less complicated form-wise, but still challenging in that we have to have a lot of different ways to help the soloist develop his solo. Knowing just one or two rhythms shown in one of those uh, <laughs> 50 beats every drummer should know uh, pages on the internet just won't get the job done. It's very conventional for the head of a samba piece to be played on the hi-hat. That is, basic time is played on the hi-hat with all the cross stick and bass drum rhythms going along also. So for the first solo, we'll want to get things started uh, moving to the ride cymbal. And we need to leave plenty of room for the solo to grow. One way is to just play the, the samba tamurin part on the ride cymbal at a very moderate volume. And that would sound like this. I'm, I'm going to start as though I'm finishing up the last few bars of the head and then begin on the solo. So you'll see what I mean. I'll start on the hi-hat and then I'll transition to a quiet ride cymbal. So on. We can also ghost uh, the in-between notes on the snare drum, uh, so I'll play the same cymbal part, but I'll fill out the sound with ghosted notes, ghosted snare drum notes in between the cymbal notes. Or a cross stick. Okay, now we'll do something similar that builds things slightly more. Here I'm going to lightly play some snare drum that reinforces the ride cymbal and then play some accents on the snare and the cymbal. At some point, about midway, we'll want to get to cross stick rhythms along with the ride cymbal. That's when we've got things pretty well moving along. So I've got this played in, in other videos, but, but uh, here it is again. We can loosen up the feel by reinforcing the ride cymbal with the snare drum, throw in some accents, and even change up the bass drum in places to end the phrase with an upbeat accent. Playing some shallow rim shots and little press rolls on the snare drum also gives the sound additional texture. This creates a very jazzy feel. So here's what that sounds like. Alright, notice that I didn't deviate from the basic samba patterns that much or for too long. If we get too far away from it for an extended period, we're not really playing samba anymore. We've lost the feel. So be careful to keep things in some kind of balance between creativity and staying with the groove. Sometimes changing up is messing up if you do it too much. 
One of the really cool things we can do is play part of the form on cymbal and snare drum, just like I did, and then settle back into a straighter sounding samba. Um, this creates a great contrast and also helps strengthen the form of the tune. So here's what that sounds like. Maybe I should have gone back <laughs> to the other one too, but you get the idea. It was shifting back and forth between kind of a nebulous, still very much in samba um, snare, and a washy ride cymbal, and then a straighter samba feel. You know, one of the things too is that I haven't really been using the hi hat on the offbeats uh, that much, so that's another way to to add energy. Um, you know, American jazz. You know, we always play the hi hat on two and four. In Brazil, this is not so much the case. Um, you know, it's another texture that we can add, um, but there are a lot of people that, that, for at least part of the tune, won't use it at all, and we'll even play it on the beat on quarter notes. Um, you know, they're not, again, not trying to simulate something that's used in American swinging jazz. Another great device for changing thing, things up is to play part of the form using Partido Alto. And this works very well if you go to Pachito doing the bridge or for half of a binary uh, meaning two-part form. It sounds like this. Notice that when I played my fills, I played something that tradition to or set up the Partido Alto. And when I went back to Samba, I played something smoother to set that up as well. Always fill in the direction you're going. Partido has a very broken or angular feel, so you play a fill that sets that up. Samba is smoother, so you play a fill for that. Actually, uh, to go to Samba, you barely need to fill at all or not at all. We need to also know that uh, all of this switching back and forth between Parchito and Samba requires a bassist that knows what to do as well. The bass drum and the bass parts for Parchito Alto are very different than straight Samba. So it's imperative that the bassist be versed in this as well. Otherwise, chaos will ensue. <laughs> this might be a good time to mention that in my book, there's an entire section devoted to comping and rhythmic patterns for bassist and chordal players. And when I work with high school and college rhythm sections, you know, we get the drummers squared away, but usually find that things still aren't happening. We need to work with the bassists, keyboard players, guitarists as well. It only works when everyone is playing as a cohesive whole. So with that, I think that's plen plenty uh, to absorb for now. As always, thanks to my friends at Peisty Symbols for their continuous support and the Conservatory of Music and Dance at the University of Missouri at Kansas City where I teach. And most of all, thanks for watching. <laughs>